In this week's video, I'm showing you the results of a head-to-head -head comparison of the all-in-one paint called Beyond Paint applied four ways to wood furniture compared with a name brand chalk paint sealed with polyurethane. I applied the Beyond Paint with a 3 8 inch nap roller, a paintbrush, a spray gun, and a foam roller. I compared the Beyond Paint with chalk paint not only for ease of application, but most importantly, durability. Of course, if you plan to go to all the work of refinishing your kitchen cabinets, the durability of the paint you use is very important. I used the same test similar to those done by paint testing labs to compare these two products, so you will have objective, impartial results to look at. You may be surprised at the results. I know I was. I used five finished wood drawers from an old dresser for this test. All five drawers were washed with crud cutter and then rinsed with water. There were no visible scratches and the finish was in good shape. All the drawer pulls were removed. On drawer number one, I used a 3 8 inch nap roller loaded with only enough paint to evenly cover the drawer. I was careful not to apply too much paint so as to apply as little texture as possible. However, the 3 8 inch nap roller absorbs a lot of paint, which is perhaps the reason the company recommends that size nap roller be used. There seemed to be pretty good coverage with very little of the wood color seen through the paint. I used a high density foam roller on drawer number two to apply the paint. It was immediately apparent that the coverage wasn't as good with the foam roller as it was with the nap roller. You could still see the wood color peeking through and the foam roller seemed to slide over the surface. So it was actually harder to apply evenly so that there weren't any visible lines. As a result, the foam roller took the longest to apply of all four application methods used for the Beyond Paint. On drawer number three, I used a synthetic bristled brush to brush on the paint. It went on smoothly, but left a lot of brush strokes. You could see the wood color peeking through in between some of the brush strokes. I used an HVLP sprayer to apply the paint to drawer number four. The paint was thinned with water to the viscosity required by the manufacturer of the paint gun. After it was sprayed on, the color looked even and it had good coverage. Drawer number five was used for the chalk paint. Since Beyond Paint is an all-in-one paint with primer, paint, and sealer, I sprayed an oil-based primer on one side of drawer number five. I didn't apply primer to the second side so I could see if primer had an impact on the durability of the chalk paint. After the primer dried, I painted undiluted chalk paint on both sides of drawer five using a synthetic bristle brush. The chalk paint had good coverage with visible brush marks. A second coat of paint was applied to all five drawers, and then I applied two coats of polyurethane sealer to drawer number five with the chalk paint. Since Beyond Paint already had a built-in top coat, this step wasn't necessary for the four drawers with the Beyond Paint on them. I then allowed the paint to cure for a full 60 days before testing. Beyond Paint says their paint is fully cured in 30 days, so I actually allowed twice as long for the paint to cure thoroughly. I basically used the same tests in this video to determine the durability of Beyond Paint that I used when I tested 13 brands of chalk paint in a prior video. That video will be posted at the end if you'd like to see the results. I didn't receive any compensation or support from any of the companies listed in this video, nor did I receive any free product. Therefore, I'm giving you my unbiased opinion of what I saw when I compared Beyond Paint with chalk paint. The first test was to evaluate the texture of Beyond Paint compared to chalk paint. I carefully examined the texture on the surface of each sample and then gently ran my finger over it. The chalk paint and the Beyond Paint that were applied with a brush looked identical. Brush marks remained evident on the surface of both. When I refinish a piece of furniture with chalk paint, I lightly sand it multiple times with 220 or above grit sandpaper to smooth the texture. I sand it after the primer, in between coats of paint, and in between coats of sealer. I didn't sand the chalk paint at all for this test. If I had sanded it, the chalk paint would definitely have been more smooth than the Beyond paint, and few brush strokes would have been seen. The Beyond paint specifically says no sanding on the package, so I intentionally didn't sand it. Thinning the chalk paint with water can also reduce brush marks, but I didn't add any water to the chalk paint. The sprayed sample of Beyond Paint appeared to look about the same as the brushed. 
However, the texture seen on the sprayed sample appeared to be the wood grain, not the paint texture. Here you can see the Beyond Paint applied with a high density foam roller on the left and a 3 8 inch nap roller on the right. The nap roller left a lot of texture on the surface that could easily be seen and felt. Only a little texture remained with the foam roller. The sample applied with the foam roller appears to need a third coat of Beyond Paint. However, the other samples didn't appear to need any further coats of paint. If the final painted texture on your furniture is important to you, then this information should help in selecting the preferred paint and the application technique. The durability of Beyond Paint compared to chalk paint was tested using a scratch test and a modified version of the adhesion test done by Paint Testing Labs. I refer to it as modified because I used packing tape and they used a special tape. This was the same packing tape I used with the chalk paint test video, so if you watch it, I'm comparing apples to apples when it comes to testing adhesion between those 13 different chalk paints and Beyond Paint. For the scratch test, I used the same hard plastic pen cap I used in the video to test the 13 chalk paints. That video will be linked at the end so you can see how Beyond Paint compares with these chalk paints. I would like to mention that one of the 13 chalk paints was a DIY recipe chalk paint that did surprisingly well compared to the expensive commercial brands. This certainly was not a complicated test. I simply scratched the surface of each sample multiple times using the same pressure on the pen. The sample painted with the nap rollers on the left and the brushed is on the right. You'll note that the scratch test badly damaged the side brushed on, whereas the side applied with the 3 8 inch nap roller fared better. However, even on the side applied with the nap roller, there are still several areas where the pen scratched through the finish below. The spray painted side on the right failed the scratch test. As you can see, it was badly damaged by the pen when I applied the same pressure to the pen as I did with the other samples. The side painted with the foam roller did about the same as the sample painted with the nap roller. There are quite a few small areas on the foam roller side that broke through the paint, revealing the finish below. When comparing the chalk paint with the primer and without the primer, I scratched through the primer in two small areas. It didn't break the surface of the paint on the side at all with the polyurethane. You'll note that I pressed so hard on the pen I dented the wood, but the paint held up well. I was a little surprised with the results. I always assumed that the primer would make the paint more durable. This test is making me rethink that assumption. Of course, I know the main reason for primer is to prevent bleed through of the stain or tannins from the previous finish or bare wood under the paint. It's the intent of the sealer to protect the paint from stains, water, and damage. Overall, I think the chalk paint without the primer proved to be the winner in the scratch test, followed closely by the chalk paint with the primer. I'll be releasing a video in the upcoming weeks showing the result of these same durability tests done on about 10 brands of all-in-one paint. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be notified when this video is posted. I think you'll be surprised to see that there is a significant difference between the brands of all-in-one paint. I've included some DIY recipes of all-in-one paint as well in my testing just to see how they compared with the commercial brands of all-in-one paint. So stay tuned to my channel. To do the adhesion test, I made a crosshatch on each sample with a razor blade. The packing tape was applied and quickly removed after 60 seconds. A passing test according to the paint testers lab is when no paint is removed by the tape. As you can see, no paint was removed from the sample containing chalk paint. Both showed no lift off of the paint. Paint was lifted off on the sample applied with a foam roller. When the tape was re removed from the sample that was sprayed on, a significant amount of paint was removed. The paint applied with a 3 8 inch nap roller also had a significant amount of paint removed. The brushed on paint also lifted off, but not as bad as that applied with the nap roller. Once again, the chalk paint was the clear winner of the adhesion test. Since Beyond Paint includes a sealer, I wanted to test its ability to protect the paint and furniture against stains. Therefore, I placed a small amount of fresh lemon juice, grape juice, and olive oil on each sample. I waited 30 minutes before wiping it off with a dry paper towel. All of the finishes held up with no trace of the lemon juice or grape juice. 
However, each sample retained an oily residue from the olive oil. I was unsure if the oil had soaked into the finish, so I wiped it off with water, but the oil remained. Therefore, I sprayed a small amount of crud cutter on a white cloth and then used that to remove the oil residue. The oil residue came off showing resistance to these food products on all samples. Therefore, all of the samples passed the durability to food products test with flying colors. To my surprise though, after removing the residue from one of the samples, I saw black paint on the cloth. The paint was apparently coming off. I've used crud cutter on recently refinished furniture for a long time. It, it's not uncommon for me to get marks on newly finished furniture. And I don't want to sell it like that, so I take the marks off using crud cutter. Provided the paint and poly sealer have had at least 24 hours to cure, I use the crud cutter to remove the mark and I've never had any paint come off on the cloth. As you can see, the paint came off with every Beyond Paint sample, but no paint came off with the chalk paint sample. I would call this a win for the chalk paint sample. As I mentioned earlier, I allowed the chalk paint and the Beyond Paint samples to cure for a full 60 days before performing any of these tests. I hope you found this video helpful in evaluating the durability of chalk paint compared to Beyond Paint. I tried to be objective and I showed you the actual tests so you can draw your own conclusions. I have two more videos you may enjoy on your right. In addition, if you become a subscriber and click the notification bell, you'll be the first person notified when I post my weekly video. Thanks for watching. this every day and I'm still so amazed